All right, hello everybody. Um, it is officially crossed 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So if you haven't been outside in a while, you feel like you need to detox or sweat a little bit, highly recommend it. Wait for 15 minutes till I'm done though. Um, my name is Jack O'Halloran. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Scale Labs. Scale Labs is the core team behind the Scale Network, which is an open, decentralized public blockchain network. Um, Scale is a modular multi-chain network. I'm gonna talk a little bit today about what that means talk about kind of uh, some of the challenges and opportunities of multi-chains, um, or app chains, or horizontally scaling blockchain infrastructure. Okay, let's get into it. All right, um, let's first define what is a modular blockchain or a modular multi-chain blockchain network. Um, in short, it, these are blockchain networks that are not one blockchain, but many, many blockchains, but also many blockchains that are all tied together, that have a root of a, a baseline security, um, and they're systemically coordinated all through essentially a modular or containerized infrastructure. Um, why, like why do we need modular blockchains? Why don't we just use single blockchains? Well, the reality is, is when you have a fixed supply at some point, you're gonna meet a, a point where you either have to raise prices or be, have people be comfortable with uh, poor performance, right? It's just, it's just physics. Um, so modular blockchains don't seek to scale uh, Vertically, they, speak, they seek to scale horizontally, okay, or to grow horizontally. Um, I think traditionally, we're, there's been this uh, just, just dead-focused effort on taking blo a blockchain, uh, either connecting another blockchain on top of it, or connecting off-chain off -chain scaling infrastructure above it. Now, um, in the multi-chain world or app-specific blockchain world, uh, we believe there's a belief to have many, many, many chains as long as you're not sacrificing security and user experience. But those are challenges, okay? So I'm gonna address those. Um, and, and some of these challenges, we, uh, we just had unknown unknowns. We started building scale in 2017 and kind of went through this infancy stage and then kind of crawl and, uh, and now, we're, now it's this toddler stage where we've got a full network live and it's, it, things are really starting to move. Um, but we learned a lot in, in process and there's, there's unknown unknowns uh, when building you know, new, uh, new models. So um, the primary challenge with modular blockchains is that if your security from validator sets are broken out in a one-to-one -one ratio of, valid of blockchain to security, you're really not you know, gaining anything. You just have many, many disparate blockchains. Uh, and I would go as far to say these are just side chains, okay? If you have uh, you know, a set of validator operators and the stake for those operators is exclusively tied to the, the operators working just on that chain, that's a problem. So, um, so how do you get around this? Well, one, you need to be able to, I'll get into this in a second, but the goal is to have many, many chains that all work together in a collective security dynamic, all right? Um, the other piece is if you can do this in concert with the Ethereum mainnet, scale, for example, is built into the Ethereum mainnet. There's, uh, 30 plus smart contracts that are actually the authority of the scale network. They determine uh, really how the network functions, operates, and, is, and how it's administered. Um, you get even more security. Um, the other piece of this is when utilizing Ethereum, you're actually creating a, a network of, it's almost a decentralized rev share model. There's fees every day that go to the Ethereum network from scale as opposed to being parasitic, having a completely separate chain that's just bridging assets out of Ethereum. Um, the scale network or any modular multi-chain that's integrated in a real meaningful manner will bring fees back uh, to Ethereum. For example, uh, every time a scale chain is set up, it's roughly $5,000 in gas fees to set that up. Every time nodes are rotated, there's gas fees. Every time someone stakes or pulls staking rewards or a slashing condition were to happen, all of that happens on Ethereum and gas fees are paid on the mainnet. Okay, let's get into the, the meat of this, all right? Um, so the magic here really is, is in containerization and advanced cryptography. So Scale, for example, has eight subnodes on every node. Okay? There actually can be up to 128, uh, but then there's different performance issues. Eight seems to be right now a very good number in terms of creating uh, pooled security and having incredibly high performance, having sub-second block times, having uh, you know, a, a really good use of file storage and memory on each chain. Um, and so that is the current configuration setting. Now, every single node then can be concurrently running on eight unique blockchains or app chains or sub chains, whatever you want to call these, right? We, it's called scale chains in the scale world. 
Um, these containers then, when a chain is created, the Ethereum mainnet actually orchestrates and, and connects these subnodes together in a chain. And so they're acting, we have this independent operating chain with its own IP address and RPC port, but it's not independent from the perspective of slashing conditions and security uh, and coordination and staking rewards and validator pool. Um, and the Ethereum mainnet through using BLS and uh, DKG mashup are actually able to have a secure entropy to talk to the nodes and pull them together into these groups, these scale chains or app chains, um, if you will. And these also, to have further pooling of security, those nodes are randomly rotated and reassigned. Um, and so what we're trying to do is create collusion resistance in a fully decentralized autonomous manner. The other thing is that if a node goes down, if the node quits working, if the validator operator decides to just stop, well guess what, the Ethereum mainnet can slash that validator and actually reassign a new validator and maintain liveliness in a fully autonomous manner using smart contracts on Ethereum and using and speaking to the node core in each of the nodes on the scale network. Okay. Um, so what we're going for is a, uh, a design of high performance and pooled security where we don't just have a, you know, a side chain where nodes are working uh, one to one ratio of stake to performance, but we have a much greater ratio and a pooled security dynamic where we can have an unlimited quantity of, of chains all working in con with validators in concert. So let's say, you know, this, someone says, hey, I want to go set up my own blockchain. Well, on scale, you don't have to go recruit all your own validators. You don't have to go uh, uh, start from scratch. You can plug into the Ethereum ecosystem, go to the mainnet, pay, run a smart contract, pay scale tokens, and actually have a blockchain created for you, all right? And, um, and tap into that pooled security, tap into, uh, it, EVM across each of these chains. The other thing is it opens up a dynamic of new business models, okay? So, um, and who's had a $100 plus gas fee in the last year? Okay, anyone had a $1,000 plus gas fee? <laughs> yes, still, yep. There, and, and, but who's ever paid $100 to Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services using a Web2 application? Nobody. That it's, it's subsidized, you are paying for it. You're just paying for it in a different dynamic. And scale enables developers and uh, across, the, across the board to leverage this technique by um, a DAO, an entity, a person, a company, anyone can take, get buy scale tokens and pay them into a contract to pay for that chain. And they pay in advance for a year. Uh, it creates a zero gas fee model. Now, the goal is to make that work forever. By the way, there's also something called S-Fuel that is a gas that, that instead of using financial, uh, rigor to do um, rate limiting, it uses scarcity. And so if users are spamming, they're gonna run out of the S fuel, but the S fuel doesn't have monetary cost, it has scarcity value, okay? Um, so the goal is to make this zero fees forever. That means that even this multi-chain network needs to be able to scale. So it's actually a, a non-linear uh, pricing curve for chains. And as the, as the network, right now there's already 25 chains in the current state of the network, 160 nodes, it could produce about 80 chains. And as each, as the network gets more and more overloaded, so does the price increases in a nonlinear manner. What this does, it actually motivates validators to go set up more servers. There's also something called a minimum stake rate. The minimum stake over time continually drops. Validators must run more hardware and essentially support more chains. Now, it works the other direction too. If it weren't economically viable, validators would run less nodes and uh, there'd be less chains out there and uh, the system's able to balance and have harmony, okay? The goal is to let supply and demand work together as opposed to, you know, painting ourselves into these corners and saying, oh, well, we didn't expect this much to happen and now fees are astronomical. Okay. Um, the other part about modular blockchains is that they allow other, you know, newer features and models to be created. So, um, new, new product features. So for example, there's scale file storage. Because of this containerization, every single chain can run file storage locally on chain. You can run a full website, an Nginx server, Node.js. You can run these, uh, you can mint NFTs and store them locally in this file storage container all on scale today. Um, there's also native Oracle functionality. Stan, uh, uh, Scale's co-founder and CTO of Scale Labs will be talking about this uh, later today. I'll give you the details in a minute. Um, you can turn on multi-transaction mode, so you can have super high throughput processing um, or speedy game mode. Um, so this, these, these modules also enable configurability. Um, 
in the future, we, we love to see our partners that are building roll-up techniques and ZK techniques even be able to leverage these containers and modules and rent chains and deploy decentralized roll-up uh, products. Uh, excited to see the innovation take, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what Scale has is many, many EVM chains with stake and pooled security. It opens up uh, a lot of doors. Um, we, you also will be able to have a greater quantity of nodes. You could pay more scale to have 50 sub nodes instead of eight. Things like that that may make performance less, but further increase your security across the network. Um, there's also automated bridge defense uh, using a mainnet escrow. There's different features that are coming out. Even though Scale's bridge is decentralized using a, a BLS threshold signature scheme, uh, we want to make it even more secure, or the community does, and everybody contributing here to Scale. Okay. Um, Stan will be talking about Scale's Oracle in a little bit um, uh, in the, I think, Sarbonne room. But you could have an ape, for example, on the mainnet, and without that user transferring the asset over to, to scale, the scale oracle can look and say, OK, this 0x address has this ape. They can use the ape in the game. If they trade the ape to another transfer to another address, it recognizes that, and that user no longer can use that NFT asset from mainnet over on a scale chain in a scale metaverse product. There's an example. There's also many other examples Stan will talk about. OK, these platforms, these multi-chain products do not they come with challenges. They come with uh, unique problems. And one of those is bridging, OK? So it wasn't until just this last month that each scale chain could bridge from one chain to another, all right? And, with this, uh, in the, and during the peak of the, the bull run, it was $100 to go from a, a scale chain A to scale chain B, because you'd have to go to the Ethereum main and come back. And now, um, through this BLS threshold messaging, there's zero cost bridging. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds. You can go from chain A to chain B, et cetera. Um, there's also widget and uh, tools being created. So end users shouldn't know what an IP address and RPC port are or a different chain. They just have assets. They can plug, connect MetaMask, connect a Web3 wallet, and plug into the scale Metaport. This is open source code. Anybody could, DAP developer can use this and implement this or you know, run their own, uh, own widget. But this widget, uh, we're also excited to see what our wallet partners are building. So uh, my Ether wallet, for example, can plug into this ecosystem and make this dead simple for users to play games across a scale ecosystem. Um, the other issue here is token mapping. Um, if, some, if a user moves to Ethereum tokens from one, two chains simultaneously and try to move them over, that chain will then see, recognize them as two separate, unique tokens, even though they're the same token. Uh, so the answer is to have a kind of human coordination, so to speak, or decentralized coordination, where people recognize, hey, let's try to build bridges that leverage one chain, and then, they, then the system can, uh, there's zero mapping issues. So that's, uh, uh, that coordination actually took place in scale purely from a community perspective. Um, there's, now there's over 1,000 developers building across, I think, 170 projects on scale. Um, and there's, there's hubs that are being created. So instead of having, right now there's 25 plus chains that are live, and instead of developers needing to try to manage this whole coordination and trying to figure out where to plug into, well, all the liquidity is pooling up on one chain. And so uh, Ruby Exchange now is live on the scale hub. And then from an NFT marketplace perspective, all of those are, are pooling around the uh, NFT marketplace hub called Calypso. These are full community run projects. The, these are all at the end of the day just the same type of chain, but these hubs are coordination vehicles to make things more simple and make partner integration simpler. Um, here's a quick little snapshot of, of what's happening here across these different hubs and different products and tools. I'm excited about the, you know, supporting Ethereum and having these hubs come in and, and add a lot of value. Um, uh, so, I, you know, big news for, for scale uh, is V2 is now live. Um, just a month. <laughs> took a long time. Like I said, it was, it was more of a, like, you know, multi-year project. It, we started, as I said, at the end of 2017. But now uh, V2 is up and running. Users are bridging from chain to chain. Gaming is absolutely on fire, uh, uh, blowing up. Um, some really great partners here. Uh, recommend go check it out. You can go, uh, go use the scale chain today. Um, Ruby Exchange now has been live for one month. Um, excited about that. Go check out ruby.exchange. Zero gas fee trading. Really phenomenal team uh, building DeFi. Um, so, hey, thank you. Uh, Multi-chain, I believe, is going to be more and more of a narrative, as will, as will modular blockchains. And we're excited you know, to do this from an Ethereum-first perspective. Uh, the scale team is here to 
you know, we feel really a piece of the fabric of this community. And again, just excited to be here. You can find me on Twitter there, uh, at Jack O'Halloran. And Stan will be speaking at 6.50 p.m. about Scale Oracle. Okay, thanks everybody.